Hello, everybody. Welcome again to another edition of Badger Blitz TV. I am Jake Kokorowski, senior writer at BadgerBlitz.com. Of course, your rivals.com destination for all things Wisconsin athletics. From the recruiting trail inside Camp Randall Stadium and on the court of the Cole Center. And guess what? We're going a little bit beyond the Cole Center today. We're going out to Sioux Falls. I'm pretty excited to, to check back in with uh, an old Badger, an old friend, if you will, transferred from Ohio State to Wisconsin, now in the G League, got, you know, jumped into the NBA too, doing all these big things, making a big impact. We got Micah Potter on the show. Micah, man, great, great catching up with you. How are you doing? How is your experience rolling so far uh, with some big numbers uh, being put up in Sioux Falls? Uh, it's going really well. Um, my wife and I have really enjoyed our time out here, you know, getting to know the team, getting to know the city, the community, all that kind of stuff, and just trying to make our way to, to make it to the big leagues. And, you know, just talking about that, you've obviously, you know, come off a great college career. You're heading in there. If you could describe the journey for us after your time at Wisconsin where you're playing in the summer league, you know, you're you're now in the G League with the Sioux Falls Sky Force. You had, uh, you know, a couple of tea, a couple of coffee with – uh, the Detroit Pistons for three games, and uh, you know now you're back. Just how's your journey been? It's been a lot of fun. Obviously, there's lots of travel that's involved, um, lots of moving all over the place, and very little stability. Um, but it's been nice to kind of, you know, have an opportunity to to be at all parts of all parts that's of the it. league. <laughs> uh, be, you know, be in both the G League and in the NBA. Obviously, my time in Detroit was a lot of fun. You know, being able to be there for those four games and. Uh, be able to play and, and get to know those guys and um, get a taste of it and kind of get my feet wet a little bit. That was a lot of fun too. And so, um, I mean, but the, you know, the whole process has been really enjoyable. Um, that's excellent. You know, kind of taking through this real quick too. Look at your player card. We put together, I don't know if you can see this on your, your end, but we have uh, kind of a player card. We have some stats, you know, 52 career games at Wisconsin in two seasons. 11.6 points per game, 61 per, uh, or 6.1 rebounds per per contest. Uh, you know, you play. You know, NBA.com stats stated that you know, you, play, you had three games for the Pistons. I think it was four rebound, four points per game, three rebounds uh, per contest. But you know, in Sioux Falls uh, with the Sky Force, you've you know had 21 games, all starts, 16.5 points per game, 9.1 rebounds per contest. You're averaging nearly a double double per outing, and you're shooting almost 56 percent from the field, nearly 46 percent from three point range. Man, just I guess with with all that, how would you? Uh, I guess within those experiences within the G League and whatnot, just what are the differences you've experienced, you know, jumping from college, jumping from Wisconsin to the pros and what adjustments you've had to make? The biggest thing is probably just the speed of the game and the style of play. Wisconsin has a very specific style of play that's very, you know, a little slower, more methodical, you know, making sure we're taking care of the ball, you know, first and foremost, getting the absolute best shot possible. Um, the, the professional game especially in like in the G League and NBA is a lot faster paced uh, a lot more possessions a lot more shots all that kind of stuff um, so that's uh, probably that was probably the biggest adjustment is just getting used to the speed and pace of the game um, but I'd say it's, it's been a really easy adjustment for me I've really enjoyed it being able to get up and down a little bit more um, get the opportunities for some more shots all that kind of stuff and I think you know my game has translated very well I mean you, obviously you've seen the stat increases in, in pretty much every facet of my game and um, so it's been really fun uh, within that too, man, you have, you know, you, you had, you know, with the Miami Heat and then, the, you know, the, the Detroit Pistons. What's what's the feeling? Let's go with, with Detroit. When you're hearing that you're getting your name, you know, there's interest in you with the Pistons and you're going to join that organization for a time being, what are your emotions of jumping in and, and playing at the highest professional level? Yeah, well, it was kind of crazy. So I had just gotten back. We uh, The G League has the Showcase Cup in Vegas every year. And so – uh, that had happened, and then right after that, we got to go home for Christmas for a couple of days. So I had just gotten back to Sioux Falls the uh, night before from uh, my hometown in Cleveland, Menor, um, for Christmas. And then literally, my wife and I were just you know doing some shopping. So we had a day off uh, at the mall, and I got a call from my agent saying, "Hey, you got to go pack your bags. You're going to Detroit in the morning." I was like, "Oh my goodness!" <laughs> so it's kind of just like we just got to Sioux Falls. wasn't really expecting anything crazy to happen, you know. Uh, but then, lo and behold, I had a quick turnaround, had to go pack my bags and get ready for Detroit. So uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I loved my time in Detroit, the team there. We had, we had a couple wins, which was a lot of fun, too. Got to know those guys, the coaching staff, the GM, all that kind of stuff. So it was good. Really enjoyed my time. 
I'd say within that, how does how does your contract work then when it comes to you know you're you know working with the Heat for a little bit and then the Pistons and then with the G League how do, how do, how do your contracts work out with that then for those that don't know? Yeah, so um, I signed what's called an Exhibit Ten contract with the Heat, uh, which essentially is a is a training camp deal. Um, so what that means is I go uh, be with them for training camp uh, and all the preseason games. And then, you know, depending on what happens there, you know, you go to the G League team. So I, my, as of right now, my uh, I get the G League salary, but I also got a bonus uh, from being with the Heat for preseason. Um, and then uh, the contract I signed with Detroit is a completely separate entity. So it's a 10-day contract. Um, it's like the G League and NBA are, are affiliated with each other, but they're completely different leagues. So you have to sign a completely new contract once you go to the NBA. Uh, so I signed that contract, and that one uh, was for 10 days. Um, and then once I finished that contract and my 10 days were up, then I come back to Sioux Falls because they own my G League rights, if that makes sense. So that's pretty much how it works. Excellent. Excellent. I was going to say, man, you know, for, for, how did Wisconsin in your eyes help prepare you for the next level? Like, what did you what did you take from your time in Madison to, to help prepare you for the next level? The biggest thing I'd say is um, just the discipline that they teach there. Um, like I mentioned earlier, they're very methodical in how they do things. And that's why they've been so successful over the years is the discipline and attention to detail. And that stuff doesn't change, you know, at the next level. So um, I'd say that's probably the biggest thing. Obviously, you know, the relationships I built there were, were second to none. It's really enjoyed my, from a college standpoint, you know, having that kind of fun in college. Um, but from a basketball standpoint, the attention to detail and the discipline that they teach there is probably the biggest thing that I would take to the next level. So within Wisconsin, for that matter, man, how many games do you get to see? How many games have you seen this season, you know, with your busy schedule, with, you know, going to the NBA, coming back to the G League, when not, and, and just practices, games, et cetera? How often are you able to catch catch games? As much as I can. Like you said, the schedule's kind of crazy, and we're tra- the travel schedule for the G League and NBA is crazy, too. So you're pretty much on the road all the time, very – very little do you have, you know, just stability of just being in one place. So I try to get as many games as I can. I've gotten a couple couple over the course of the year, and you've probably seen me tweet about it when I'm watching them. But uh, I was definitely going to make sure I saw that Purdue game because that was <laughs> probably the, the most important game of the season so far, and I really wanted to make sure I got a chance to see it. Thankfully, I was able to be home for that to be able to see the game. So I was going to say that within that too, man. Like, how did you? I we saw the social media reaction. Your your wife posted it up up on social media. You retweeted it, uh, quote tweeted it. What are your emotions as a former player, being a former teammate of, of some of those that are on the court or on the bench? You know, uh, seeing Chucky Hepburn, who I know you, you weren't a teammate with necessarily, but make you know bank in the three, the game winning three with under two seconds left. What's going through your emotions with that next defensive possession? What's all going through your head at that time? Just excitement. I mean, obviously, obviously, you know that you know those guys are my brothers, and so I got a really, really good relationship with all of them. And I apologize for the background noise. We're literally getting ready to go on a road trip right now. All good, um, no worries. To Iowa, so that's why it's a little I see the background. But um, th- those guys are my brothers, and so to have see them have success like that, especially with you know the adversity they've had to go through. No one thought they'd do anything throughout the entire year. They all thought that you know they'd be what 10 from the big 10 and for them to come out and you know sweep the, what everyone thought would be the best team in the big 10 in purdue and just have all these big time games come from behind have this you know the uh uh the resiliency that they have and the toughness that they have and the grit that they have you know it's super fun it's super fun to see it's super fun to watch especially because i've got relations with all those guys and the coaching staff and all that kind of stuff so i'm just super happy for all of them yes, yes. I mean, you have a unique perspective, too, because, you you know, I know there are some new players, right? You had the three transfers, Jacoby Neath, Chris Vogt, uh, Isaac Lindsay, but then you had the three new freshmen, Chucky Hepburn, as we mentioned before, uh, and then two freshmen that are redshirting, and Matthew Moores and Chris Hodges. But the, all the others you have relationships with and you've been able to watch. What the – as a player, and maybe something that we don't see it from either reporters or casual – you know, basketball fans, what development and what have you seen from those that your former teammates on the court that has helped lead to them at least grab a share of the, you know, Big Ten championship with them being able to win it all, you know, all for themselves coming up on Sunday? Right. Well, I mean, I think everyone can understand Johnny. I mean, he's <laughs> National Player of the Year candidate. He's a superstar. He's a lottery pick, all those kinds of things. And I'd say the, the biggest thing for him 
um, is one opportunity because he didn't have much opportunity last year with the, with the you know age and the lineups and the people the personnel we had on the team at the time. But I would say last year, especially come tournament time, you could kind of see a flip switch where it's like he would you know sometimes as freshmen there's you know some growing pain he didn't have a lot. No, don't get me wrong. He did not have a lot of growing pains, but there's certain things, you know, just understanding and learning the game at the college level that kind of takes a little bit of adjustment. Um, but come tournament time, he was really starting to develop into his own and get comfortable and confident and all that kind of stuff. And then obviously, you know, as the coaching staff and team has alluded to, you know, this summer he went with Team USA and played with the best players in the country for, you know, at his age. And he was one of those guys and he competed and he played really well. So I think those things, his confidence is really just kind of, taken over a lot for him you know the opportunity that his confidence because he had all the talent in the world even last year but you know that those two things that really helped him a lot um, another big thing Stephen Crowell I mean not uh, he barely played last year but then for him to come into the starting and you could see again in practice like he was going to be a very very good player for Wisconsin um, just with the you know making the right plays making the right decisions you know playing smart playing hard um, all those kinds of things you could tell he was going to be a really good player um, but for him to see, you know, him come into the game, get his confidence with his jump shot, I think it's a big part of, you know, the Wisconsin's, you know, offensive style is, you know, having a floor spacer like that that allows guys like Johnny to get to the hole, you know, and Chucky to get to the cup and distribute Brad, same thing. Um, and then Tyler Wall is Mr. Do Everything, obviously. I mean, he's just been – he's had like a steady progress of getting better every single year. And for him, again, just confidence, you know, ability – you know, as you get older, you know, your experience helps a lot, too. So just to have him get another year under his belt is huge. And then Brad, I mean, he's, you know, the leader of that team, you know, being, you know, the you know 60-year-old that he is on that team, the grandpa <laughs> of the team, being there for his eighth year. Um, having that leadership is huge, especially for a team that's as young and as inexperienced as the team is. You know, I think it was huge. And I think, you know, anyone on the staff, or coaching staff and on the team as players would agree with me, like, having him on the team has been vital for this team and, and, and their stability and their toughness and, you know, all those kinds of things. So it's been really fun to watch for sure. So How would you describe Tyler Wall's game? Cause I've joked on radio hits, like doing beat radio guests where like, he'll back up and he can get into the post, but he, he kind of does the same thing my dad used to do to me in the driveway and he, he gets it up nicely. I'm not hating on his game, whatever, cause it's effective. And he's been an X factor for Wisconsin this year, but how would you describe Tyler wall? Uh, you said Mr. Do everything, but what would you say on the offensive end? Offensively, his biggest strength is his patience. Um, a lot of the time you guys, you see guys, cause he's for being as good of a post player he is, he's undersized, you know, to be right. a guy who, uh, <coughs> excuse me, is constantly playing in the post. Especially you got guys like Kofi Coburn and Hunter Dickinson and all these big bodies that he's gone up against. Um, and Zach Eady again at Purdue. So, you know, his patience is probably the biggest thing that is that is a strength of his. Uh, you know, he, he has uses his extra pivots a lot. You know, he's patient, pump fakes, finds the correct angle to get it over those big bodies. He's a really strong person. He has he may not look huge, but he's a very strong <laughs> you know, guy, like, you know, he, he, his body doesn't necessarily show it all the time, but he's a strong guy. And so for him to have the base that he has and the core strength and, and the body control that he does and his touch is fantastic too. I mean, he can go both hands, left and right off the glass, not using the glass. He's got great touch around the rim too. So I'd say those are, you know, that's a big reason why he's been successful. His patience, his strength, his body control and his touch, they're all really, really, really good. I was gonna say you, you mentioned by the way you talked um, you, you tweeted out you know Coach Garden you know it was last, after the Purdue game Coach of the Year how often do you keep in touch with him and and, and the coaching staff and you know how you know how do you guys still yeah, everyone keep in contact even though you're busy you know, yeah they're obviously I, I keep busy. in touch with them as much yeah 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 for sure I keep in touch with keep in touch with them as much as possible I mean obviously like you said they're busy and I'm busy and it's not an everyday conversation. Right. Um, but like I, I text, I try to keep in touch with them, you know, at least once a month, um, if not more. Like I texted Coach Kraft, the Rutgers game, because I knew that was a big win for them when they won at Rutgers. And for them, not only to, because winning at Rutgers is a tough place to play, it's a place to win, but also for their chances of winning the Big Ten, I knew that was a huge game for them. Um, so I texted them then, and they've kept in touch. They sent us a little. Uh, care package i guess you know you could call it with some, with some wisconsin gear uh not too long ago so i'm um, trying to keep in touch with them as much as possible obviously like you said they're busy and i'm busy but it's definitely a good relationship there so and then last question for you 
How far do you think this team goes? They're on the cusp of, of having that outright Big Ten championship. They beat Nebraska on Sunday. They wrap up the number one seed that way in the Big Ten tournament, and then going forward yeah, to the NCAA no, tournament. Where do you see sure. them going? Uh, for sure, for sure. I think they've got a chance to, to have a pretty good run here. Um, just with the, especially like I saw a stat. Um, it's like I think on, I can't remember. It's like fifteen or sixteen and one in games decided by six or less points. Yep. Um, those kinds of stats matter, especially when it comes to playing in a tournament, because no matter who you're going to play, they're going to give you your best shot, obviously, because it's a do or die situation. And so, you know, having the resiliency and the toughness and the grittiness that the team's had all year has only prepared them to have success in the tournament because um, every it, very rarely are there blowout games in the tournament. So every game is going to be close. And so they prove that they can win tough, you know, close games. You know, with, I guess, with the record being 16-1. and one. And so uh, for them to have that kind of record, that kind of track record with, throughout the regular season, uh, I think it's going to give them a great opportunity to have a lot of success in the Big Ten tournament and then also the NCAA tournament. Mike and man, we appreciate you making time. You're on, no, you're on, you're heading on the road, man. I appreciate you making yeah. some time for us on Badger Blitz TV for everything, man. Uh, warmest, you know, wishes for, for continued success at the professional level, man. We'd love to catch up with you down the road too, my friend. Absolutely. Appreciate you guys having me. Awesome. Micah, take care, man. It's Micah Potter, Sioux Falls Sky Force, former Wisconsin Badger. Guys, I'm Jay Kokorowski. We're going to wrap it up here. Y'all have a great weekend. We'll talk to you more this next week on BadgerBlitz.com and BadgerBlitz TV.